Welcome back. Now, last week, Deputy Governor of the Central Bank, Matthew Elderfield, gave his strongest indication yet that debt forgiveness could be introduced for homeowners here. But is bailing out struggling mortgage holders only going to fall back on those of us who are able to meet our repayments? Or can an effective scheme be worked out that will help those in arrears? Angela Keegan of MyHome.ie and Carl Dieter of the Irish Mortgage Brokers join us now to discuss this. Good to see you again. Uh, we better start by explaining, Angela, the difference between <laughs> debt restructuring and debt forgiveness. I think we already have debt restructuring. And I think the latest figures are that there's 90,000 mortgages that have been restructured. And when I say restructured, that means perhaps I've taken a mortgage or somebody has taken a mortgage over a period of 25 years uh, perhaps they find themselves after taking a salary reduction or they've lost their job for a particular period of time and that a mortgage is restructured perhaps over a longer period of time debt forgiveness would be where some part of the debt is actually written off and as yet uh, the banks haven't come forward um, to write off any of uh, normal uh, people's debts as such. Of course, we do have NAMA, yeah. which takes uh, debt forgiveness, debt forgiveness yeah. as well as debt restructuring yeah. for um, a large number of uh, property developers. But in a nutshell, I think that's about it. Yeah, but surely debt mm. forgiveness, I mean, for, for those people who are actively paying their mortgage and then for people who perhaps speculated and are now getting, you know, large parts of their loan written off, I mean, is that what's going to happen, Carl? Is it like, OK, here you go, you won't have to pay that half million now, we'll let you go, or yeah. will it still follow them? Debt forgiveness, I suppose, is really about writing off a debt rather than pursuing it. It's debt write-off by another name. And I think it's important to remember that part of the IMF bailout package for this country is that we restructure our debt laws by the end of the first quarter of next year because our debt laws are so outdated. Mm -hmm. At the moment, financial institutions can only work within the confines of the legislation that exists, and that legislation is outdated, so we don't have any debt forgiveness. But it's not going to be and I will say this loud and clear, it is not going to be free money or a bonanza. Debt forgiveness will have to involve a lot of pain. It may mean that you still lose your house. It will mean that your credit history is ruined. It could mean that you, you have to be in terrible arrears before they'll even speak to you. But when all of that happens, the bit that's left over, the judgment part that you can't cover because your house might be in negative equity, will not be something that can be enforced upon you into the future. And I think that's actually a better way of looking at it. It's, it's commercially intelligent to approach it that way because otherwise you create zombie citizens who can never get back on their feet because this debt is above them. Yeah, I think, like, I'm one of the people who's flip-flopped, I suppose, on debt forgiveness. And when it was first muted a couple of years ago, I was completely adamantly against it, thinking, goodness me, if people, you know, borrowed, they made a decision to borrow, and it should be up to them to pay back. I think over the last couple of years, we've all seen that, you know, house prices have reduced further, and, and the last year alone, they're down by another 14%. And I think we find ourselves now with a cohort of the population who borrowed... Um, and, and, you know, went into borrowings um, at a particular time who now find themselves owing money that they're never going to be able to pay back. In the main, they're a well-educated group. Um, they're, like, most of them are still paying their mortgages, albeit a lot of the mortgages have been restructured. Mm -hmm. But they find themselves in a position that they're burdened with this debt. They're not able to take risks. And when I say take risks, they're not able to perhaps move job perhaps start their own business. And we absolutely, as a society, I've come full circle. I would agree with Carl, you cannot make it easy for people. But I think we have to keep give people an avenue out of the bind they now find themselves in. <coughs> and I think we will be looking to the banks and to the financial institutions for innovative solutions to this problem moving forward. Carl, what are the banks saying so far? Are, are any of them even showing a hint of favouritism? Uh, the approach so far is, uh, in layman speak, is to kick the can down the road. They've brought out several codes of conduct on mortgage arrears, which are pieces of, of law that are introduced by the central bank, uh, formerly the financial regulator, that mean that you can't repossess a house if the person engages with you, that you can't start legal proceedings for, say, a year. And that isn't really a, a, a solution because what's happening is when people go into arrears, sometimes they come back out, they call it self-curing. Other times they just go deeper and deeper into arrears. And the type of arrears that we're seeing in Ireland, it's just one direction. The people are going from 90 days to greater than 180 days to greater than one year. And that means that they're, they're never going to bounce back from that. So the question is, do you offer them some mechanism so that they can have a future? And people get annoyed. They say, I don't want people getting something for free. Angela certainly is correct to say that she flip-flopped because as the situation changes, your opinion should change. And 
at any time someone is always getting something for free. If you're renting a house, someone down the street is getting their rent paid for them. If you're paying a mortgage, there's someone who there's 18,000 families on mortgage interest supplement. There's someone getting their mortgage paid for them. So do we allocate any of our resources towards those who will never be able to pay those debts, mm -hmm. or do we say to the banks, if that person is in negative equity and you take their house, they've lost everything. Are you still able to say that in the future I'm going to get another 50 grand from you? Mm -hmm. I think that, that that's ridiculous. There are people there to take these losses. There are still equity holders in the banks, which are, are, are the shareholders. They're still subordinated bondholders. You could turn around and say to the bondholders, we're not going to burn you. What we are going to do is give you all of these mortgages because that's what your money was used to finance here. Have the asset that you backed. Mm. What type of person will be eligible, do you think, for mm. debt forgiveness? How deep in debt will they have to be? I, I would imagine uh, that, that they're going to be the, the fringe case. Mm. Someone who, for instance, both people signed up to the mortgage. They've both lost their job. They're more than a year in arrears. Uh, you know, they have no savings. Any family help has been stopped. Their credit history is shot. Uh, they might be in industries where they would have to retrain even if they wanted to have prospects of getting a job. Mm -hmm. It will be for the people who are, at the, it, they're, they're so weak that to hurt them more is, is, is nonsensical. Yeah. And I think that's where we need to, to get into it. This is not a get money for free scheme. Yeah. It is not a bonanza. Well, is, isn't that what uh, Matthew Elderfield said he was worried about? Well, I think moral hazard is what uh, Matthew Elder Elderfield has been uh, talking about up to last week. And uh, last week he's come out and said that, you know, it, it, it would be perfect, perfectly reasonable for banks to offer uh, solutions for people who find themselves in, in um, a negative equity trap. I think the other thing, the other uh, key indicator for me, uh, Frank Daly, who's uh, head of the um, of NAMA, uh, about two weeks ago in Cork, he was talking about uh, properties which NAMA have on their books, and he was talking about working with AIB and BOI, and hopefully coming out in the autumn with uh, a mortgage product for people who want to purchase properties either from receivers or from NAMA. And if my understanding of it is correct, very simply, it's 10% deposit. You organise your mortgage through this particular scheme for the balance of 90%. However, you only draw down 70% of it. So the risk is shared. And if the property doesn't increase in value um, and, in fact, drops in value, NAMA would absorb the additional 20% of the mortgage. If the mortgage, if, if the property value increases, then you draw down the additional 20%. Now, if there's a, a, a product being put in place and a mechanism being put in place for entrance to the market to guarantee them almost against negative equity, it only um, it has to happen that a similar situation uh, has to you know, be brought through for those that already find themselves in that situation. And that leans back to what Carl was saying about a code having to be brought through by uh, early next year. Yeah, what, what Angela's referring to actually will help future buyers, but there's mm -hmm. a huge amount of people already in the system. And I think that rather than looking at new credit, the, the focus when the legislation does change will be on people who have already bought. The, the sad reality is, though, that in the past, banks used to always have mortgage indemnity guarantees. They had these insurances that when they lent to a certain amount, if the, if the loan went bad, they could claim on it. Well, as the boom started to happen, they stopped getting these insurance policies, or else they'd self-insure them, or some of the insurers went bang. So that's, a, that's, that's an issue, is that, that reckless lending did occur, sometimes even when it was responsible, because they didn't have the underlying mechanics correct, and that all has to be addressed as well. Okay, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there, folks, for this morning. Carl and Angela, a very good morning. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. Now, it's not easy to open a shop in this current climate, which is why the idea of pop-up shops are 